way. All right. Hello, I'm the Hibu. Most people probably know me more for my Stardew Valley content as I'm also a Stardew Valley speedrunner, but I like to play Terraria on the side. I've been playing it since its release and actually only recently got into speedrunning. Uh, there's going to be a pretty big info dump at the start of this run. Uh, there's a lot of things that I need to explain to get a lot of people up to speed if you have never seen Terraria, played Terraria, or even seen a speedrun of it. This, as introduced, is the any percent. It's basically the any percent category of this run. Our goal is to kill the final boss, which is Moon Lord, in the least amount of times possible. I will be doing this on the easiest difficulty. Uh, well, second easiest difficulty. Journey is essentially the creative mode of this game, but I will be playing on Classic, and I will be using a completely random seed. Uh, I'm going to be selecting a small world because it's the easiest tra to traverse. We're not going to be on this world for long. Plus, uh, faster, smaller is faster for speedrunning. Our evil biome is Crimson. You get to pick between two of your evil biomes, Corruption and Crimson. Crimson is overall just faster. It has something called Icker, which will decreases, which decreases the defense of enemies, allowing you to do more damage, as well as later on into the run when I'm farming souls, it is much easier to make a farm for the souls using uh, Crimson Blocks instead of Corruption Blocks. And that, I'm going to generate the world so you guys can all see it. Uh, again, this is the random seed. I'm going to be doing no major abuses. No major abuses is kind of, I would consider it an outdated term. Back in older patches of the game, there was a lot of duplication bugs. There was a lot of invincibility machines. There was a lot of uh, just overall major game breaking bugs. Now those are much less prevalent. They are still banned, the ones that do exist, but I will still be using a lot of uh, exploits. Anyways, uh, the run will start when I enter into the world, so uh, I can explain as I can con continue going. Anyways, I will start in three, two, one. Uh, so the first thing into the into a run that I try to do is look for big trees. I'm going to be needing to build a bunch of NPC houses to get NPCs to move in. Uh, you get more wood the taller the trees are. Unfortunately, this world did not spawn me with great trees, so I'm just going to continue walking. My first objective is to get the demolitionist to move in. To get the demolitionist to move in, I need the merchant to move in, which requires 50 silver that you can get through killing enemies or chests that you can find out throughout the world. And then uh, after that, you need to find bombs for the demolitionist to move in. I'm going to go down this tree. There should be a door somewhere down here. If I can find it. I hear it. And there it is. Living. Uh, this is a living wood tree. They generally have uh, a luminate. This will sell for money later on. I did get bombs, so this is fine. I can replace getting big trees with bombs. So I can just blow up trees this way instead of having to manually chop it. I did get a bad prefix on my axe, which is minus 10% speed. Uh, I don't really want to be chopping down trees at that low of a swing speed. Other than that, I'm going to immediately start building houses. Uh, if anybody has seen a speedrunner house, uh, you know they are basically prison cells. There are very few requirements for a house to count as valid. You just need a certain number of blocks uh, or so a number of air blocks in the house to for it to count as valid, as well as a table, a chair, a light source. And uh, the biggest misconception is the fact that you need background walls for NPCs. You technically don't need background walls for an NPC to uh, be happy with the house. Some design like this that you see on the right. Uh, I got it be making more tables and chairs is actually perfectly val or valid for uh, NPCs to move in. The thing is, is for NPCs to actually move in when you have no NPCs, uh, you need background walls for the check to actually go off. So I will still be building houses with background walls. It's just that I build one house like this for the guide, which is a uh, mob that spawns by default. Now, I do need torches as a light source, and I unfortunately did not get any slimes to spawn, so I'm just going to continue running around until and hopefully I get to some slimes to spawn. I'm just traversing the world. I heard the guide hit a slime over here, so I'm going to go back right. Hopefully we get two gel. We do, and I'm going to go and replace these torches. 
And as you can see, I can move the guy into this house just fine, even though there's no background walls. The requirement for the background walls is as long as there's no more than four open air blocks or four, four uh, blocks not of background walls, it is a valid house. And that is like a perfectly valid house. Uh, the other thing you're going to notice me doing when I cross deserts is open up the is this housing selected or valid and then spam click it below. There are pyramids in this game which like to hide under sand uh, dunes and actually I got one. So you can see in the bottom right of your screen there is a housing marker that says this housing is too big. That means there's a pyramid down here and I'm using this tool to locate where the entrance is. And then I'm going to uh, dig down a little bit. I am actually just going to use bombs to get down there faster. A little bit over, but it's fine. Pyramids are great because they can have powerful accessories. There are accessories in this game that you can find from chests that do all sorts of things. Uh, notable ones that I want are Hermes Boots, which allows me to run faster, and uh, Cloud in a Bottles, which give me uh, double jump capabilities. This can have uh, one of three things. It can have a Sandstorm in a Bottle, Feral Robes, which are almost completely useless. Thank you, uh, Marathon Luck. And then Carpet, which allows me to fly a little bit. Uh, the other great thing about pyramids is the fact that it gives me a lot of money. That 50, 50 silver requirement is completely void now because now I have uh, I now have uh, 11 gold. The other uh, major issue early on in this run is getting enough money for the rest of the run. And with pyramids, getting the 11 gold makes it easy. I found a hill cave here. I am just going to take it. Well, gen in this game is a little funky when you're using small worlds. As you can see here, this cave is just completely blocked off by this crimson, uh, crimson granite abomination that we're looking at. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to be exploring caves here. I'm looking for resources like life crystals, which will increase my maximum HP as well as uh, as well as accessories that I can find from chests. I didn't really find anything there. There was just a bunch of area blocked off, so I'm just going to recall and try a different direction. I did explore a little over here, but I stopped. Uh, the main thing that I want to explain about world gen is, generally speaking, worlds have kind of set structure to them. Uh, there is our merchant, which is good. We should be guaranteed a demolitionist at this point. They do somewhat have a uh, set structure to them. On both ends of the worlds, there is a dungeon and a jungle biome. The dungeon and jungle will always generate on opposite side of the worlds. Th that is guaranteed no matter what. Now, there are some other biomes uh, that are in the mix, like the desert, the ice biome, and then the evil biome. In most normal worlds, or most normal small worlds, let me be specific here, uh, the underground desert is on the side of the jungle, and the crimson and ice are on the side of dungeon. Crimson likes to move around the most out of the three, and you can have worlds where ice and desert are on the same side. It's just much more rare. But anyways, this is the underground desert. This is the place that I'm looking to get to the most. This place has uh, basically the best loot in the game. It is generally very open. I can get a bunch of things here and just make my way down. Uh, uh, that I'm just going to be exploring for a little bit. So uh, if you want to get in a few donos, you can. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first I'd love to share an update about a major incentive we have open right now. Bonus game seven, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past is scheduled to be on later today as long as we hit that incentive of $400,000. Right now, we're sitting at about 125 k meaning we need to still raise about $275,000 in just a few hours to get more awesome games done quick, more GDQ, and it's gonna be fun. Let me read one quick donation here. We have from CyberbotX, $25, who says, Terraria is such a labor of love from its developer, Relogic. They've put out how many final versions now? I've lost count, but I love the game so much. So good luck on the run, Habu. Put this to getting the Link to the Past bonus game in. Thanks so much, Cyberbot X. Can I keep going? Uh, yeah, I got I got a little bit longer. I'm just sure. getting into Bane Cave. 
Thanks so much to Anonymous for your $100 donation who simply says, Terraria Hype! And I better see those hypes in the chat. <laughs> and here's another one from Weezus. We have $25. Thank you for your donation. They say, Last Day Hype! Let's crush these donation peeps. Happy 2023. All right, I'm going to butt in. So I got probably one of the most important items for this run just then. Uh, it is known as the Pharaoh Claws. In the newest update, they added a new feature called the Auto Swing or Auto Fire. Uh, this makes every weapon tool, just anything that you can imagine, automatically used if you just hold down the left click button. Uh, well, it makes every single weapon but one, which just so happens to be the primary source of damage in a speedrun. Uh, this was totally unintended because the weapon that we will be using is generally considered a very bad weapon by casual players, so I don't even think the devs realize that this is how it works. <laughs> uh, so yeah, getting the claws is actually very important for me. The other thing is, as I mentioned uh, right before the, right before I let Mellow go through with the uh, donations, is I want to enter Main Cave. So, Main Cave in the jungle is a cave that generates in the jungle that goes from the surface to all the way down into uh, Hell or the Underworld biome. The reason this is so very important is because, first off, it's just a cave that I know that should not end. So it gives me a lot of uh, room to explore. And then the other thing is, um, well, I say it should be open. I, f I forget where I was going with the other thing. Obviously, uh, and then I also want claws, I think is where I was going with that. The other thing about it is, uh, when I say should, there is actually a small chance that it's completely blocked off by the jungle temple, which we will be going to later, or a beehive. So I would have to dig around it. Luckily here, I didn't get uh, marathoned and it's completely open and I'm perfectly fine. The other things that you see me popping that I uh, didn't get to mention is uh, life crystals. Life crystals increase your maximum HP by uh, 20 every time you use them. I didn't pop them until after the demolitionist moved in. This is because NPCs, when they move in, have a priority queue on them. And if you pop life crystals, the nurse will move in before the demolitionist, making it uh, really slow and unfortunate. I saw money over here, so I went over. We should be perfectly fine on money. I could have recalled by now, but I'm playing it a little safe and trying to find extra loot. Um, I'll probably just go to this granite biome and recall at that point, because I need to start making my way down into hell before uh, day happens. This is the jungle temple. Sometimes it just likes to spawn in the middle of the jungle for whatever reason, and just kind of ruins a bunch of... Uh, terrain luckily that did not happen uh, anyways again i'm still exploring i'm just playing it safe in an ideal run i recall about six minutes in and it's obviously much past six minutes so anyways i didn't get too many great accessories i only got the claws which is very nice uh to get other than that i'm just going to be selling everything to the merchant here getting as much money as possible. That is a blood moon. That is a little unfortunate, but it should be fine overall. I would be uh, jumping for joy if this was an actual run that I wasn't playing safe. Because blood moons are really good. They allow me to get lenses very easily because it increases the spawn rate of monsters. Lenses are going to be very uh, useful later on for when I need to summon the mechanical bosses in hard mode. Other than that, I'm just going to dodge the enemies on the surface for now. We're going to go underground where I don't really have to worry about Blood Moon mobs. Uh, this is another uh, this is a, another segment here in a second uh, for Donos. But essentially, I'm going to be uh, bombing all the way down into hell. This is the setup for uh, well, what's supposed to be the final boss of pre-hard mode, the Wall of Flesh. Uh, but we're going to be doing him second in this run. If you've ever seen a speedrun in this game, you know that Dynamite is probably the best early game weapon in the game, and I am 100% going to be abusing that to kill our first three bosses that we fight, actually. Uh, so other than that, I'm just bombing straight down to hell. It should be quick. I am going to just pick up a few chests or life crystals that I see along the way. I'm also going to try to find gems for a grappling hook. Uh, 
yeah, other than that, it's pretty straightforward at this point, still looking for Hermes or whatever, so you can take it away for another like few donos. Should have plenty of time here. Sounds good, Habu. Thank you. From Trizate, we have a $50 donation. They say, Terraria as a speed run? Take my money to all of the GDQ staff and runners. I appreciate all of your hard work for such an important cause. From Depatman, we have $25. They say, this will be my last donation of the event, and I had to save it for one of my favorite games, Terraria. This donation is going towards the Link to the Past run because donating for more runs is always the correct option. Thank you to Patman. I just want to mention, every cent counts. Whether you're able to donate $5 or $500, it's always appreciated. We're here to support PCF, the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And no matter what you're able to donate, it's going to be loved and it's going to be received well. Um, I also want to mention, I like limericks. So if you're trying to get a donation read and I see a sweet lim limerick come through, it will probably be read. You can keep going. Okay. From Schmarty, we have a $50 donation who says, what a marathon. Congrats and thanks to all of the AGDQ staff and runners. Thanks for being a wonderful addition to my week and keeping company or keeping me company today as I run clean the house any percent, no solvents. Donation goes to Link to the Past because we need more GDQ and we need all the Zelda. And also from Pat, we have a $5 donation. Thank you so much. Here's five towards the Link to the Past 100% run. We can do this, people. All right. Um, so you saw me there. Just take a little moment to craft the bed. Beds can be used to set your spawns and also sleep the time away. Uh, the other thing that I do need to get on my way down here is obsidian. So luckily I did uh, run into a little obsidian deposit. I've been a little slow at getting down, but it should be fine. I'm kind of waiting. Well, I would like to wait the night away, but uh, I do need to kill a boss before the end of the night. So I do need to speed up a little bit. We should be almost down to the bottom of the world. I can check my map real quick and we are. Um, the biggest pain of this run 100% is inventory management. There's so much that you can do. Uh, I also crafted a grappling hook. Topaz isn't a great grappling hook. It is technically third worst, but uh, we got to make do with what we get. It's still much better than Amethyst. Uh, so we're almost down to hell. And once we get in hell, we're going to be doing two things. Uh, I'm well, I'm actually going to be doing one. I'm going to delay the, uh, the bridge itself because I need to save a little bit more time. Uh, the main thing that I will be doing is building a house for the guide. Now, this may be weird. Why are you building a house for the guide in such a dangerous area? Well, there's a simple reason for that. To summon the wall of flesh, you need to uh, kill the guide. Generally speaking, casually, you're supposed to kill a demon that is holding a voodoo doll. These uh, demons that spawn with uh, voodoo dolls are actually quite, quite rare. I believe it's a 1 in 20 from every uh, regular demon that's supposed to spawn. But instead, on um, patch 1.4, uh, the devs added a really nice feature where if you just dunk the guide in lava while in hell, the wall of flesh will just spawn by itself. So I have no need to wait for the voodoo demon to spawn. I can just make a nice little house and move him in and be fine. The other thing you're going to notice is I'm using something that we call a bed warp, which essentially allows me to set my spawn right here. If I place a falling block and recall the spawn, the next time I use a recall, I'm going to teleport back to that bed because I just revalidated the house with a falling block. Uh, so it's a nice little tech found by uh, Mr. Steffi back on a older patch. Uh, I got to do this menu fast. Otherwise, these guys are going to start swarming me. Should be fine. Evil is on this side, jungle is on the left. That means dungeon is on the left, right? So my next objective is to kill uh, Skeletron real quick. Normally I would farm some vertebrae as I go past the crimson, but since I'm already about 17 minutes into the run, I need to kill Skeletron before night hits. Otherwise I'm going to be a bit behind so I'm going to just run past the Crimson and do this later. Maybe kill a few enemies as I go. Hopefully get a few vertebrae. 
I'm gonna need 12 vertebrae total. The reason I need 12 vertebrae total is normally I would need six, but I'm gonna be doing two destroyers just to be a little safe to guarantee that I get enough hollow bars for all the stuff that I wanna make. So I will be playing it safe. There's a floating island up here. I'm gonna ignore it for now because again, I'm a little bit on a time crunch, so I'm just going to run past everything. Uh, it is a blizzard, so we might get a really funny deer clops summon. Deer Clops is a boss that was added in a recent update as a collab with uh, Don't Starve. It will happen if it is a blizzard, and I believe if it hits midnight, uh, he will spawn naturally. Hopefully that doesn't happen because he will be a little bit annoying to deal with. Uh, looks like we're safe. 18 minutes should be fine. I have it till 2015 on my timer. I think the GDQ timer is going to be a little off, but that is the first day-night cycle. So I got about a minute. Again, Dynamite is our best friend. I'm going to be killing the first boss solely with Dynamite. Uh, Skeletron is very slow moving on this patch, or uh, on classic mode, so it's very easy to line up shots and get him. I also have a abnormal amount of HP for what I'm used to, so I can basically brute force tank enemies. Dungeon Brick is indestructible, so I don't have to worry about dynamite falling on my head. Uh, that was a little scary. I did almost get juggled. But he's a pretty simple boss. Dynamite does a ridiculous amount of damage. In a perfect setup, I would have killed him up there, but I didn't get enough throws in. Otherwise, he is dead right there. Oh, we got an upgraded uh, grappling hook. Nice drop. Anyways, now that we are... Uh, now that Skeletron's down, we have access to the dungeon. If uh, we didn't have access... Or if we didn't kill Skeletron, a dungeon guardian would come out and just one-shot us. So killing Skeletron is obviously very important. In the dungeon, we need two things. I need to find the mechanic. The mechanic will be used later for other things. I have 50 seconds left on my feather fall. I gotta watch out for that. If I lose my feather fall, I'm just gonna end up falling to my death. <laughs> is basically how this works. Ooh, nice pet. So we're going to make a, basically a really scuff mob farm. How mobs spawn in this game is they need a solid block, or most mobs need a solid block, and they need to be a certain uh, distance away from you. These pits that now generate in the dungeon are essentially perfect mob uh, traps because all the enemies can spawn down here. I can sit up here safely, throw grenades down, and just farm a bunch of bones. The, again, the main thing that I'm looking for here is the mechanic, and I need 30 bones for a summon later. I also picked up a piggy bank from the merchant before I left. This is essentially a second inventory slot. Uh, I heard something get damaged down here. I heard something get damaged. That's normally the mechanic. So I'm going to be using it as basically an extended inventory and throwing all the stuff that I don't need in here. I don't need iron right now. I don't need that. I generally throw my potion materials in here as well. We're not getting great spawns as I do this. Oh, you know what? I think I heard the slime being hit and it sounds similar to the mechanic getting hit. Again, we need 30 bones. We do have a key, which is nice. I'm going to be looking for... Uh, chests there are locked chests in the dungeon that you need to get keys for to open the dungeon chests are actually in a set order the first one is muramasa and the second one is cobalt shield i want cobalt shield muramasa doesn't really matter to me because grenades are just a better weapon um so the order is Muramasa and then Cobalt Shield. Now this does get a little scuffed if your dungeon is like generating over each other. This is the mechanic. So I was waiting for her to spawn. If I right click on her, it will unbind her. I'm gonna buy junction boxes here real quick. Check how many bones I have, 26, 30. Thank you for diving in on top of me, that's fine. And now I'm going to just explore the dungeon a little bit. If I can find, uh, there's, a few more things that I could find that would be nice. Again, the next chest should have the Cobalt Shield, which will be very nice to not take knockback. Uh, because when you have the Feather Fall on and you start flying around, you can just get juggled by monsters, which is really annoying. The other thing is there are two different types of uh, crafting stations that you can find in the dungeon. One is the Bewitching Table. 
which will increase one uh, summon slot, which we will be using later. And one is the alchemy table, which makes you less likely to use uh, potion ingredients, which we will be using later. This dungeon is very linear, so this should be the cobalt shield. Uh, that's a locked chest. That's the second locked chest. You know what? Dungeon gen. We gotta love it. Uh, that said, I can just kill this one, and then hopefully this is the Cobalt Shield. Look at that. Oh, and we got a Shadow Key. We love to see it. This is the Bewitching Table that I was talking about. I'm just gonna pick it up. And now, as you see, as I mentioned earlier, this was a Bed Warp. I'm here. I do want to go to spawn so I can refresh my nades, so I'm just going to do another quick Bed Warp. And that bed is now revalid. I'm going to do a little bit of inventory here so you have time for like a donation. Certainly. Uh, how about this? From Jade Lynn, we have $50. Thanks so much. They say have to donate for the final bonus game. Link to the Past was the first video game I ever played and my favorite game of all time. Let's meet that goal and defeat Ganon and Cancer. Thank you, Jade Lynn. Alrighty, so I'm just going to be buying more dynamite. I'm going to need it for the wall flesh fight, plus things after. Buy a little bit more nades, because nades are the best weapon source. And now we are going to get back into hell. So I'm going to need to make a very long bridge. This is known as the wall flesh bridge. Uh, even most casuals do this. It's essentially just going to be a really long bridge that I'm going to be throwing dynamite uh, down across as wall flesh comes. He is a sideways boss. He will sp always spawn on the side that makes him run the farthest to the edge of the world. So since I'm on the right side of spawn, he's going to spawn on the right side. But he's just a slow moving wall of flesh, hence his name. He has three segments that you can hit. His, he has two eyes and a mouth. This is why dynamite is very effective against him. You can hit, you can technically hit all three segments with dynamite, doing 750 damage a dynamite throw, which is an absurd amount of HP when he only has eight, uh, eight thousand. That said, generally speaking, you only hit two segments, so it's not very powerful. And then this is where the shadow key comes into place. In uh, in the underworld, there are shadow chests that can only be opened by a shadow key. And these have very powerful loot. It will also give me a lot of extra money, which I will definitely need for bosses later on. Can I snipe that guy? I can. Gotta make sure I'm dodging. I'm making this bridge extra long. This is definitely way longer than I need it to be. I'm probably only going to use half of it, but marathon safe. We're going to uh, run with it. So now I gotta walk all the way back, and I mentioned this before, you actually don't need a voodoo demon anymore to spawn. As long as you are in hell and guy dies to lava in hell, you just dunk him in. Sorry, Levi. Uh, but your time has come. So this is the wall flush boss. Uh, again, I'm just gonna throw dynamite. You'll notice that I'm going to hit two segments each. Hopefully two segments each once she starts moving. I'm just throwing them up in a line, hopefully dodging the lasers a little early. <laughs> of course I'm early. Should be fine. This is why I made the bridge extra long. And he's dead. Very easy, boss. Uh, now that I've killed him, I have realized my... Uh, one mistake. I said I was going to farm vertebrae before going into hard mode, and I definitely didn't farm vertebrae before going into hard mode. So we're going to have fun. That is a mimic that I almost didn't see. Uh, so we are going to have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to recall here. I'm going to have to do backup strats because I got too engrossed into commentating and doing the run. I'm also doing straight strats because it's like Normally, when I recall after the dungeon, I just immediately go to... I immediately do wall flesh, and I already have the vertebrae. Uh, yeah, that wasn't the case here. Luckily, I did get a very powerful weapon from wall flesh. Uh, there are four different types of weapons that you can get. One uh, corresponding to each major damage type, which is range, melee, mage, and uh, summoner. 
I got the summoner one, but it's just a very good generic weapon. It gives you a lot of range. It does a lot of damage. It's nice. The best weapon to get is actually Breaker Blade. It was severely buffed on this patch and will basically one shot everything in the Crim or Corruption or it basically one shots all hard mode bosses. As you can see here, this doesn't one shot everything, but it definitely has more range and is easier to use. So the one thing that I forgot to get before uh, going into hard mode is Vertebrae. So Vertebrae is a one in three drop trance chance from most monsters in the evil biome or in the crimson here. The issue is in hard mode, a lot of those monsters go away and are less likely to uh, show up, which obviously uh, is bad. So I wanted to do it earlier. I just, <laughs> again, got ahead of myself. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do, I heard a monster, I heard a face monster, which can also drop a vertebrae. That's why I'm kind of like stuttering looking here. Uh, the other thing that I need to do in the corruption biomes here is once you get into hard mode, you get a pwn hammer and you can break these altars to get hard mode ores. I'm going to need to do this later. I don't have a pickaxe that can destroy it, but once I get back into the underworld, I will be able to get a pickaxe. I just don't want to have to come back to the the corruption later and uh, have to walk all the way over here. So I'm just going to do this now. Ooh, a golden chest. I'm just going to kill these guys. I want to make sure that I don't destroy. I want to make sure that I don't destroy a heart here. Destroying a heart can give me a gun, which allows me to get the arms dealer to move in, which I do eventually want. The issue is, is if I destroy a, a heart and I have more than 200 HP, there's basically a one in three chance for uh, for goblins to spawn. And they're a real pain to deal with. So we just don't bother destroying any hearts in this run. I see a bunch of loot here. That's why I'm kind of taking my time. I would really like Hermes boots and a cloud in a bottle. I'm really struggling in the mobility department on this run. Uh, unfortunately, that's just how runs go sometimes. Unfortunately, we are not getting anything that I want. I'm going to recall here. We got everything that I need. I'm going to do a little bit more inventory, and then we're going to make my way back down to hell. Yep, three vertebrae. It's not bad. Not great, but it's not bad. Uh, also, I got three of those. Because uh, I'm probably going to die otherwise. I'm going to drink the Feather Fall so I can remove fall uh, fall damage. Or any fall damage that I can take. And I'm going to need to make my way back down. So once you, uh, one thing that I didn't say, once you get into hard mode, there are going to be two new biomes that spawn. The underground hollow, which you can see right here, which is the light part of the game. And then the underground uh, corruption. These spawn in a V of each other. So if I know where one is, I will automatically know where the next one is. So if I were to take a look at the map and look at the surface real quick, I can see the hollow spawned on the right. So if I keep going uh, left here, I will eventually run into the underground crimson. Now, the other thing that I want to do is obviously not die. I'm getting shot from everywhere. Uh, and obviously, other than inventory management, I'm sure a lot of people are ripping their hair out with how I do inventory management because it's different than theirs, but uh, it's fine. So I'm going to I'm going to make obsidian skin. This is why making potions is so uh, important. There's so many unique and interesting potions that you can make that will just significantly boost your combat power or your defensive capabilities. So what I just made there was a obsidian skin potion. It allows me to just dive into lava. No, no care in the world. Uh, this is very useful at getting hellstone. I need 60 hellstone to be able to make the molten pickaxe, which will allow me to mine the hard mode ores. Once you get into uh, hard mode, which is, I, I'm calling it hard mode is the second half of the game. It's supposed to happen when you kill Wall of Flesh. There's like six bosses that you're quote unquote supposed to kill before Wall of Flesh, but there's no there's no prevention for you to just go right on ahead. Uh, so now that we have 60, I gotta go over to one of these Hellforges real quick, make the pickaxe, and then we should be good to go. 
to make our souls farm. So to continue through hard mode, or the next bosses that we are going, or I am going to be fighting is the uh, mechanical bosses. This requires a bunch of different things. Ooh, legendary, good prefix. It requires a bunch of different things, all the way from uh, iron bars to souls of light and souls of night, which you can see me slowly uh, accumulating. Souls of night and souls of uh, light drop respectively from the two biomes I just mentioned. The underground hollow and the underground uh crimson that just spawned now you don't fully have to be in the biome as long as there's enough blocks nearby which there are underground you can even get the souls of light and souls of night in the underworld which is a perfect location to set up a mini farm basically the dungeon is a more scuffed version of this you saw the little pit that i made this is going to be a little bit more uh a refined version if you are a certain amount of blocks above, or you have to be a certain amount of blocks away for enemies to spawn. So basically, I'm going to make a huge platform for monsters to spawn on, and then I'm going to go a certain amount of blocks up for the monsters to spawn on those blocks, and then they're going to accumulate into the middle because they're trying to path towards me. So that is already one of them. The other thing to note about this is the fact that I'm specifically using uh, crim blocks. The reason I'm specifically using crim box is because I want these guys to spawn, these Icker stickers. Uh, this is one thing that uh, I will argue with a lot of people on, the, what do you call it, Icker or Icor? You can't tell me it's called Icor when it is a Icker sticker. I'm just saying. No pun intended, but it was a pun intended by the devs. Anyways, again, the monsters are going to corral themselves in the middle, and I'm just going to drop dynamite down. Placing a chest on blocks makes blocks indestructible by dynamite. So this is a very uh, practical use of just kind of sitting here, waiting for monsters to spawn and blowing them up. So this will be a good uh, time for donations. I'm looking for nine souls of light, and then I'm going to need 15 souls of night. Uh, anyways, you can go now. <laughs> for sure. Thanks, Abu. Okay, how about this? From Viviv. We have a $200 donation, and they say, good noodles doing great things. Thank you, VB. <laughs> and thank you for, uh, to Legendary Tetanol for your $200 donation. They say, I have been watching Habu's Zenith Seed playthrough and super looking forward to this Moon Lord kill. Good luck. Yeah. And how, I can keep going for a while, right? Uh, yeah, you can keep going, but let me say something real quick here. Sure. Uh, I only need nine souls of light. The reason I only need nine compared to the 15 souls of night is because I do want to do two Destros. But other than that, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing in the underground crimson that is right to the right to get a bunch of souls. So this is going to be like a really massive time for donation. This is generally a very big down point in the run where you're just hoping monsters spawn, blow them up with dynamite, hoping you roll well on souls. Uh, totally but understand. yeah, other than that, you are free to go. Excellent. Okay, I have a lot of super exciting things to go through, but real quick, just a, a, an incentive update. Currently, we're at 139k out of that 400,000 we're trying to raise for The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. 100%. That's the bonus game that we have scheduled for later today, and we're still trying to earn it. So make sure that you're clicking Add Incentive. And also, while you're at it, check out the prizes that are available. You can see them right from the donation page, what minimum donation you need to make to be entered to win any of those. But let me pause and give you a very fun one. We have a $20,000 donation from the Yeti. And they say, uh, hey all, Yeti here. We have some amazing news. We've hit over 100,000 raised with the support of AGDQ 2023 collection orders from the Yeti. Thanks to everyone who has picked up some teas, every order helps. We wanna take a second to give a special shout out to artist Drew Wise. Drew has contributed dozens of designs to GDQ events since we started working with GDQ 12 years ago. Thanks to amazing artwork by Drew and all our amazing artists, we've been able to raise over $2.35 million for GDQ events. Help us continue this legacy and grab your items today while the event is still going at theyeti.com. Thank you so much, The Yeti. Chat, we have got to get some love for Drew Wise in the chat. Special shout out. All contributions are so important. From, uh, we have 
from Azariel. $25, who says, more runs, more donations. Let's keep this thing running as long as we can. Yes, we need more GDQ, thanks so much. You're, you're free to continue going. Yeah, That's you got it, okay, just, cut, just cut me off then, I'll keep going. <laughs> okay, from yeah. Silly Person, we have $100 donation. They say, let's go and get that LTTP 100%. Thank you for that. Uh, from Matabi, we have a $250 donation. Thank you so much for your generosity. They say, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer earlier this year, and seeing what she and so many others go through made me appreciate this event and all the staff and runners who helped make this happen. Thank you so much. From Pat, we have a $25 donation. I hope I get to see some shimmer shenanigans. Good luck on your run, Habu. You will. <laughs> Spoiler, but you will. <laughs> An anonymous $1,000 donation. They say, unfortunately, sorry. They say, it makes me so happy to see the generosity of this community. But let's take that amount raised even further beyond. And from start soon, they donate $75. Thanks so much. They say, I can't believe it's already the final day of AGDQ. What a monumental week full of great run records, tons of laughs, and even a prize wizard. Congratulations to all involved, and let's work towards preventing cancer past this week. From oh me, <laughs> one more real quick, Mute no, donates no. $200 donating for Habu. I've watched his Stardew Valley streams for years. So excited to finally see him on GDQ, even if it's not for SDV. Much love. Hey, the category got ran, or it got into uh, the GDQ, so doesn't matter if it's me as long as the community gets it. Anyways, we should ideally be done. I've killed 50 of these guys, which is honestly, I don't think I've ever done that before. I also got extremely lucky with vertebrae, or do I need one more still? Because I need 12 vertebrae to do this. And generally speaking, you don't get more than like three or four. I'm missing one. It's fine. We can just stay a little bit longer. Um, but you, I need 12 vertebrae if I'm doing two destroyers. Normally, you only need six. So you don't have to get too many in the area. But it's like I've, I'm farming at abnormal amounts of these guys. Because I forgot to do things early. Of course, I get a kite. Look at this. Rare drop. Can I please get a vertebrae? This is the only monster in hard mode that can actually drop vertebrae. Oh, and look, he did. Uh, perfect. All right. With that, I believe we are good to go out of that segment. So next up is we need to get all the hard mode ores for... Uh, uh, for the hard mode anvil. Sorry, Kite, you're going to have to go. Oh, yeah. So we need the hard mode anvil to be able to craft the mech summons, which are the next three bosses we're going to fight, the mechanical bosses. Uh, and to do that, we need hard mode ore. There are six different types of hard mode ore, two tier ones, two tier twos, two tier threes. The best tier one to get is cobalt. It requires less to make, and it's actually just a better armor set in terms of uh, individual pieces, because we're not going to make a full armor set. I am way over on pieces of cobalt. The second one, or the tier two ore, which is the only type of ore we're going to go up to, is mithril and orichalcum. Mithril is better just because we need eight less ore compared to orichalcum. Generally speaking, I made the wrong pickaxe. Oh, well, it's fine. I generally make drills. Drills are innately faster than uh, pickaxes, unless if you get a good roll on the pickaxe. So normally I make a drill. I just by default clicked on the pickaxe. At least I did click on the pickaxe and not something else. But with the tier two or with the tier one ore, you can pick up the tier two ore, which is mithril. I'm only going to need 40 of it instead of 48, which is nice. And I already see it right next to me since I have a spunker pot going. There should be more than enough. And then, uh, and then after this, as the donation alluded to, uh, there are going to be shimmer shenanigans. I am running on current patch solely for this reason. It is something that was added. It is a new liquid in the game. This liquid has some very unique properties, all of which I'm not going to get into. But the main thing you need to know about the liquid is the fact that it can uncraft items and change items into different items, which for speedrunning is a obviously very powerful tool. 
So if you need infinite iron, just buy a few uh, anvils from the merchant, and guess what? Now you have infinite iron. Because you throw those in there, and then you get five uh, iron bars per uh, per anvil. I need anything else from these guys off the top of my head? No. All right. So next up is we are going to Shimmer. I'm going to attempt to random TP to it. Uh, it is not on Snow side. It is always on the opposite side of the uh, dungeon or on uh, jungle side. Of course, I get teleported into an area that I don't need. Random TPs like that, sometimes they're a blessing and they just immediately get get to where you want to go and other times they're an opposite. Uh, this is a slight cave, so I am going to explore it just a little bit to see if I can actually find some Hermes boots or something real quick. We'll buy them down here. Hopefully there's like a chest or two. Ooh, there's a chest. And is it Hermes? No, but I will take two Feather Falls any day of the week. I don't think I've mentioned this here right now, but uh, if you are a casual player of the game, I really recommend using Feather Fall potions. They are basically free, free wings in pre-hard mode. And they will transform any bad wings that you get in hard mode into good wings because of how powerful the potion is. It just allows you to f suspend yourself in the air and allow you to float. It is a very, very strong potion. Other than that, we're going to make our way over to Shimmer at this point in time. I have to go all the way past the uh, jungle, which is a little annoying. Hard mode jungle has things that we call uh, tortoises or turtles known by most of the community, these things do a ridiculous amount of damage when they hit you, and they like to spawn. So I'm gonna have to be a little careful on my way over, and hopefully I don't get absolutely screwed. But the jungle was pretty close, so that means we're not going to have a smushed ocean. ocean. Again, these small worlds, when you generate them, can get very scuffed with their world gen. So if you have a jungle that spawns uh, far, you are going to uh, have a smushed ocean, which basically means the jungle is going to go all the way up to the ocean, and then your uh, ocean base that I will be missed or will be making is just completely uh, doing that. Sorry, I should have stopped spamming my wig. <laughs> I know it makes a really loud uh, whip sound, but I generally spam it just because if an enemy comes, it's I want to freeze it instead of taking damage from it. But it's like <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. Just gonna be running through these guys. They're mostly dumb. We didn't get any tortoises. We did get a bunch of uh, dirtlings. Oh, we did get a smushed beach. Oh, I hate this. Oh, did we? Oh no, it's a long beach. Oh, is this like a mini desert? Okay, thank God. I thought we were gonna get a smushed beach. This is a very weird terrain, Jen. Anyways, shimmer on small worlds basically generate right below the ocean. So just me being like right here, I'm generally always going to hit shimmer. Uh, before. I actually go down, I'm going to make a few houses. So I'm going to be making what we call a nurse house. This is a house that is going to lock nurse in place. Uh, nurse is a very powerful NPC in this game. It basically, you spend money to get full heals from it. And that is very powerful on classic where you don't actually take that much damage from monsters or from bosses and can just face tank through them if you have enough money. The issue is, is you have to have enough money, which is why I'm very adamant about getting a decent amount of money in the early game, because it's going to carry over. Other than that, we're going to move Nurse. That counts as a valid house. I'm going to set my spawn here so I can come back up later. But now we are going to make my way down to Shimmer. So again, as I said, Shimmer is generally generated uh, right below the ocean on most small worlds it does change its direction slightly uh, or it has different coordinates slightly so if i were to go into the jungle and uh look to see what my jungle shrines are did i see a jungle shrine i don't think i did oh no i did i believe it's tin bricks based off of that uh i can tell ge the general depth of the shimmer based off of what type of bricks used are or what type of bricks are used for the jungle shrine because it's the it's consistent throughout the world there are five different types of jungle shrines there are two types of wood shrines there are two types of brick or three types of bricks 
the worst one, is, I believe, is gold, and the second worst one is these tin bricks. So that means, to me, we are going to have a very deep shimmer, so I'm not going to see it for a while here, so I'm going to have to keep dynamiting down. The other thing that we can find out is where it is uh, in the X uh, plane. The way how we tell where it is on the X plane is based off of what your starting guide's name is. I didn't really check because it generally doesn't matter because as long as you're bombing down about right here on the world, you're always going to hit the entrance to Shimmer. Uh, but that is something that you can do. You can basically pinpoint exactly where Shimmer is based off of those two factors. There's also a few other things that you can uh, tell with it, but they're generally not important, like the color of your moss in the world. Anyways, this should be Shimmer. You can tell when you reach Shimmer when you have like a big pile of just polished stone, and then it goes into this Aether biome looking thing. Um, anyways, again, as I mentioned earlier, Shimmer is a... I'm gonna put on water walking. Shimmer is a very interesting... concentrate a little here a lot of monsters like to spawn during this area so i gotta make it a little safe but i can actually shimmer in peace and the other very big annoyance is the fact that uh shimmer makes monsters invisible so i actually have to pay attention where they are generally i would use a falling block to make it safe which i actually have they were just in the chest so I can do this to actually get stuff in the shimmer so monsters stop falling down. I think just to despawn everything, just to make this extra safe, I am going to recall and then go back down. But again, uh, I I'm stumbling over my words because I'm trying to go fast uh, while doing a lot of intense inventorying. Uh, shimmer transforms a bunch of stuff into uh, different stuff. Now that I'm not being shot at, I can build a area down here. So if I throw anvils in, you're going to notice that I'm going to get a bunch of iron bars. I threw in my pharaoh robes, which you generally get from... I got to put a bunch of this stuff away to make inventory room. Uh, I threw in my pharaoh robes to get a sandstorm in a bottle and a flying carpet. This is like the really cool thing about keeping feral runs up until this point, because even if you get no, even if you get feral loot, you can actually transform it into the better options very easily. Next up is I want to throw recalls in so I can get some food buffs. Uh, I threw a, a heart in that basically increases my regen permanently when I use it. If I'm looking at my inventory, the last thing I need to throw in is suspicious looking eyes. This is a very nice part about Shimmer. Before, we would have to kill a bunch of demon eyes on night one to get lenses, which is a one in three chance, killing a majority of the runs if you don't get enough sh or if you don't get enough lenses from it. But because we can just throw suspicious looking eyes, which are pretty common in chests, we get a bunch of lenses for free. Anyways, with all that rambling, I believe that is everything. So we are going to have another, like, really awkward crap session right here. So I have to wait until night to be able to fight these bosses. And if you sleep in a bed, you actually speed up time. So if I just casually sleep in the bed here while crafting, the time is going to speed up while at the same time I can craft a bunch of stuff. Now, this is the point in time where I can finally explain what have I been hiding this entire time that is so overpowered and uh, it basically changed the entire endgame of the run. And you saw me craft it, I just didn't mention it. It is the minecart. In hard mode on the current patch of Terraria, minecarts were extremely buffed to do a ridiculous amount of damage. And when I say ridiculous, I actually mean like it's a stupid amount of damage. So we are going to be abusing that to uh, basically kill both the twins and Skeletron Prime at the exact same time. We are also going to be using a uh, Destroyer Instant Kill method uh, that we just call Destroyer Instant Kill, where I'm going to force the Destroyer to spawn on a single block. Every single one of his segments, he's a warm type uh, enemy, so he has a bunch of segments like Wall of Flesh. 
Wall of Flesh has three, Destroyer has like 60, 60 to 80, I forget how much it is. So if I throw a Dynamite down and it does 250 per segment, times that by 60, that's a lot of damage. So on Classic Mode, you can kill Destroyer with five Dynamite if done perfectly. You can also do this on Master and Legendary Mode, or just Master, you can't do it on Legendary Mode. Uh, so it is a very funny method of just completely cheesing the destroyer because before we'd have to do this like entire weird fight i'm just doing a few more crafts before i get in uh making our ichor arrows this is what i mentioned before so to do this we need an area that is uh essentially completely clear of uh all terrain so i'm just gonna go over here a little bit do a little checking there's not there doesn't seem to be a floating island over there it's gonna make sure i have my spawn set so with that i am going to go all the way up here so you may ask how am i going to place a block in there this is why i bought junction boxes earlier for whatever reason you can place junction boxes in the middle of the air and then you can place a platform on these boxes and basically give you an extra like double jump so i can stay in the air as long as i have uh these boxes with that i'm going to build the arena one two three just wait for them to get off screen i'm going to place the course i moved it into my piggy hopefully we don't get a wyvern to spawn during this time be a little awkward. Oh, I don't have piggies on me. I need my indestructible blocks. The reason I'm using rails to do this instead of platforms is solely because rails I can go through and monsters can't actually spawn on rails. So that's why I don't want to use platforms on these. So I'm going to play this safe and not do the jump one. So if I go here, I get the destroyer thing ready. I'm going to place background wall so I don't actually get a wyvern to spawn. If I throw these straight down, I'm going to use the ruler tool. Again, I'm playing this really safe. This is going to land on that one block and start blowing up. Once I hear it start blowing up, I'm going to summon the destroyer. He is spawning on that single block and he instantly dies. gonna place these blocks so i don't actually die to wyverns i'm gonna do it again throw down a bunch of dynamite wait for it to explode switch to the worm probably throw down one more to good measure and he just instantly dies because he's getting hit by every single or every single segment is getting hit by dynamite so that is two destroyers dead in <laughs> what six seconds each it took me longer to set up the thing so with the des destroyers dead, I get a bunch of uh, hollow bars. With these hollow bars, we're going to make two things. First off, we are going to make a hollow repeater. Uh, if you've ever seen a speedrun in this game, you know why we're making a hollow repeater. It is considered one of the best uh, weapons that you can get right away. It is a very cheap, very cost efficient weapon. Ranger is generally like considered the easiest class to play and then the other one is uh the hollowed lance which is the other weapon that i mentioned earlier that is not affected by the game's auto swing mechanic which again is very annoying which is why i needed these uh claws i need to put this butt back otherwise my spawn will be annoyed so the first thing i'm gonna make is repeater uh, didn't get a good roll, that's unfortunate. I'm going to make a ho hollowed range helmet because that's going to be our main source of damage. And then I'm going to make a jousting lance. We got a good reforge on it. So I will uh, I will say, slight seizure warning, I'm going to be bouncing between these rails very fast and it's going to jitter the screen. This is not nearly as bad as it will be in future fights, but this uh, this can be a little weird. I'm going to pop potion, uh, potion pots to do extra damage. And then we are going to summon prime and the twins and fight them at the exact same time so again as i mentioned before 
this fight is, uh, <laughs> if you have enough money, you can just directly face tank most bosses on the classic mode. And that is essentially what I'm going to be doing here. The reason I'm not holding out the lance the entire time is because the lance and the minecart actually share the same iframes. So if I just hold out the lance, I won't be doing nearly as much damage as if I just uh, shoot the repeater okay, or just constantly hold down the repeater. I will, on the way down, uh, use the lance to get some extra hits in. I'm also opening and closing the nurse menu. The reason I open and close the nurse menu like this is because if I have the menu open, the nurse won't heal herself and she'll just end up dying uh, to just random hits. 25 gold left. I am a little tight on money. Should be fine. As long as I kill Prime, I'll have enough money to tank the remainder of Twins. But yeah, this fight can be really sketchy when you're doing it at a very low amount of HP. And there goes the Prime. Prime is generally the money eater. He consumes a lot of your money very quickly. But you can see the power of the Lance and how much damage it actually does to these bosses. I'm going to kill Spaz first. The reason I place these uh, blocks is so on phase two, I don't actually get hit by the fire breath. But just look how much damage this Lance is doing. The reason it does so much damage is because the Jousting Lance does damage based off your move speed. When you're going at full speed on a two block rail in a minecart, uh, your move speed is 66 miles per hour. This is a stupid amount of move speed. Uh which allows uh, it to do a ridiculous amount of damage. Now in phase two, Redenazer needs direct line of sight for you, to you to fire a uh, laser. So essentially what I did was grit, or hook to a platform and then re block replace the platform with a block. So my hitbox is in the block, causing Ret to just not fire any lasers for whatever reason. You can also do this by just making a little bunker like this if you don't want to block replace. Block replace is just much easier, and then you can just shoot through these one block holes when he does that. But those are the mechanical bosses. Uh, pretty easy for the most part. I'm going to destroy this because this is where I'm actually going to be fighting Moon Lord later. I'm going to move the arms dealer before I forget. And then uh, next up is Plantera. Now, if you have ever played this game before, you know that Plantera is a very big pain of uh, most or just most playthroughs. The reason for this is because Plantera's bulb is a really annoying RNG thing to find. Uh, but thankfully, on current patch, they made it so after you kill the mechanical bosses, you are guaranteed one bulb to spawn. Well. I say guaranteed lightly, but you are mostly guaranteed to have a bulb spawn after you kill uh, the mechanical bosses. There are very select circumstances that can happen where you won't get a plantera bulb, but uh, on a world like this, I should get a plantera bulb, so I'm not too worried. Uh, wow, we high rolled a lot on bars. I'm going to make uh the ranger helmet for later i didn't even need to decraft it anyways this is going to be the last time or one of the last times i go to shimmer i'm going to throw in some money into shimmer throwing money into shimmer will increase your luck the reason increasing my luck is important is because i will be more likely to do more damage and more likely to take less damage uh i need blink roots so i'm just going to throw in everything that can possibly give me a blink root this is for potion crafting other than that, I think I'm good. I want to make a few more feather falls. Uh, oh, there will be time for donations in a second. Oh, I forgot to use that. Actually, you can go for dona donations now. I'm doing a bunch of potion crafting. Sure, H Habu. We have a very special dev donation. Relogic. Donates $5,000. Thanks so much. They say, love the stream. Thank you for playing our game for such a great cause. No problem. I love the game. Thank you for making it. <laughs> and the Legend of Lexus donates $25. 
They say, Habu, you've worked so hard for this and you're doing great. XO Lexus. $25 for Link to the Past 100%. And do I have a little more time? Uh, let me explain ale. So I'm crafting a bunch of ale here. Ale is like a 10%. Oh, there is one thing that I forgot to uh, make or forgot to uh, craft into. But ale is a 10% uh, melee damage increase. Basically, at this point, we're doing melee for the rest or for a majority of the rest of the run. Melee is kind of... I even though they just donated. Melee is kind of uh, Red's like golden child. Melee was severely buffed in 1.4 in a lot of ways, honestly, to the point that it's pretty overpowered. Uh, not just because of Lance, because of a bunch of other changes. But uh, any bit of extra melee damage that I can get helps. Like this thing has a base of 120 or 128 right now, and I'm about to increase it by 15%, uh, percent, as well as the 10% of the ale. So 140, have the ale up 150, and then it goes even higher and higher and higher with the more speed that you get so it's a very uh interesting weapon that a lot of casuals overlook for good reason but it's like that other than that we're just going to be finding the plantera bulb in perfect world if i check the map right here i will see it on the map unfortunate uh, so now I'm basically going to be spending hopefully the next like five to ten minutes looking for this. Hopefully less. We'll see Plantera Bulb likes to be Plantera Bulb. Uh, oh, there's an island up here. Plantera Bulb likes to be Plantera Bulb. So uh, yeah, we might have a lot of time for donos at this point. So you could probably go on for like five minutes like I've been talking <laughs> okay. for a while. Right, it, well, it's like I either find it fast or I don't find it at all. That's just how it works. Okay. Uh, feel free to just chime in whenever whenever you found it, okay? So earlier I asked for limericks, and you, my friends, have not disappointed. Uh, let me get started with some of these, and uh, who knows how they're going to come out of my mouth. But from PK, thank you so much for your $2,000 donation with a limerick. And they say, <laughs> AGDQ is a blast. So glad for runners and cast. Don't let your heart sink. Let's get the link. And I tell you, let's do it fast. Thank you, PK. Uh, from King Toad, $25. Thanks so much. They say, The Legend of Zelda at GDQ. I love bonus runs. How about you? Let's donate fast for a link to the past and raise money for a good cause too. And we have another limerick here for $10. Thanks so much. They say, <laughs> Shout out Yui and TJ Rook. Bomb for hearts and diamond hook. Defeat destroyer, wall of flesh, twins, plantera, and all the rest, and get another record in the book. And another $10 here from Ah Yes Reapers. We have, there, there once was a game with some fights. Speedrunners would play it at night. They'd finish it fast and all have a blast. Now write it on the, uh, sorry, now write it on the whiteboard. Trans rights. Thanks for that. And from Anonymous, a $25 donation. They say, a brilliant and talented cast has been showing me how to game fast, but I need one more thing to make my heart sing. And that's seeing A Link to the Past. And uh, from, oh, you know, let's give a, a, an incentive update. So we literally just passed $150,000 uh, raised towards that bonus game. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past 100%. That means we're 37.5% of the way there. Yeah, that's right, quick mental math. I'm just kidding, I looked it up ahead of time. But we're almost, uh, you know, we're making good progress and we got a lot more to go actually. So please get those donations still coming in. Uh, I have another limerick here I would love to read. We have from uh, Panda Dragon Dave, donates $25. They say, there once was a General Radon. Due to rot, his mind was so gone. But how lives his horse? Gravity magic, of course. Gonna fight him? Then first eat this prawn. Thank you to Prize Team and Dono Team and all GDQ staff for an amazing week. Putting my money towards naming the Dark, two, uh, Dark Souls 2 character, John Souls. Thank you for that. And okay, I'll, I'll read this one. Uh, this is from my mother, my very own Brutal's mom. <laughs> Thank you for your $25 donation. Uh, and she says, it's a quote, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Vincent van Gogh, honorable cause, 
Thank you, GDQ. I love you, mijo, at Brutal Mellow. Thank you, mom. I love you, too. Of course, if I just went a little bit more to the right, I would have had a Hermes at the start of the run, but now I have them at the end. Classic. Anyways, you can continue. I'm sure. still trying to find this. And thank you to Fangamer, that's right, the Fangamer, for their 10 thousand dollar donation and they say hey everybody fan gamer here this week has flown by but it's not over yet you still have until the end of the event to check out the fan gamer agdq 2023 collection donations like this one are made possible by folks just like you because until the end of the event 100 percent of the profit from sales of gdq merch supports prevent cancer foundation it's awesome merch for an even more awesome cause Find something to take home at fangamer.com slash GDQ. Thank you, Fangamer. And we have a $75 donation from Beekwin, who says, Bonjour, Habu. Great to see you at GDQ. Good luck on the run. From Molly and Patrick, a $150 donation. Thank you for that donation to PCI. They say, here's to the Prevent Cancer Foundation saving thousands of lives across nations. Let's get them some cash by making a dash over this awesome Terraria world creation. From Das Yati, we have a $25 donation who says, good luck on this run of Terraria. I hope Wall of Flesh didn't scare ya. Now let's all donate fast to get linked to the past. If this rhyme stinks, I have a spare ya? From Delta Lambda, wow, another $500 donation. Such large amounts with these limericks. Thank you everyone so much. They say, there once was a runner named Habu. The Moon Lord, his goal was to subdue. The seed was bad, no luck to be had. Oh well, guess we'll call this one a redo. Just kidding, best of luck with the run. Oh, and ironically, this seed has not been that bad. Has <laughs> had a massive amount of HP. You can continue, sorry, I just okay. wanted to put in. No, no worries at all, please. Uh, from Echo Zero, they donate $25 and say, uh, a limerick for you. There was once a runner named Habu. Terraria fast was what he wanted to do. He built a cool house with a few clicks of his mouse. GDQ PB, let's go! <laughs> Best of luck to the runner on this amazing run. And thanks to all the previous runners, GDQ staff, and everybody who helps make this amazing event what it is. It's dangerous for PCF to go alone, so hopefully this $25 will help the wonderful work they do. Donation goes to Bonus Zelda, because more GDQ is best GDQ. Thank you, Echo Zero. And from Mio, we have a $25 donation. They say, we, we need more Terraria, Hope! and some extra Zelda too. From the oh-so-beautiful Iggy Zig, we have a $15 donation who says, for PCF, for Zelda, for love, for light, for joy, for happiness, my heart is touched by each and every person that contributed their time, their treasure, and their passion to this week. Thank you for being the good we wish to see in the world. Here together, let's make this AGDQ the best it possibly can. Less than three. From, oh goodness. Okay, from Cartridge Blowers, we have a $50 donation. <laughs> and he says, Big Money Mellow. He's rocking the mic. He's a real swell fellow. That's, that we all really like. Reading donations, impeccable host. Kill the game so hard. Now the game is a ghost. At Games Done Quick, we run in it fast. So please take this donation towards Link to the Past. I love this community. How much has this space meant? Big ups to Uyama, coming straight out the basement. Greetings from Atlanta. From Dude Guy, we have a $200 donation. They say, I love Terraria. And now, thanks to you, I'm awakened to Terraria speedruns. Keep doing what you're doing, have fun, and take my money for charity. I'm gonna butt in. Uh... I'm getting a little unlucky with the bulb. I'll probably go for another like three minutes and then I'm just going to use a third party tool to look it up because I don't, it can be in one of the worst spots possible and I will never find it. And I don't want this to take forever. So we have another three minutes to try to 
explore the entirety of the jungle. If not, I'm just going to look up where it is, and then we're going to continue the run from there. So you got another, okay. like, three minutes of dono reading if your boys can handle it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, listen, as long as the donations are coming in, I will be reading them. We really love you all. Thank you so much. You know that everything is appreciated. You know, first, I think now is probably a great time to remind you all what we're here for. We're here in support of the Prevent Cancer Foundation. The Prevent Cancer Foundation, founded in 1985, is a US-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. Right here from Imado, we have a $25 donation. They say, wanted to make sure to donate for the first time now that I can afford to. My best friend in the entire world had a cancer scare in early 2022. The crisis was averted due to early detection. Therefore, the work PCF does is greatly appreciated. So, shout out to my best friend, Dano, PCF, as well as all the staff, hosts, and runners that made AGDQ 2023 possible. Less than three. From Hazy, we have a $250 donation. And they say, so happy to see Terraria at GDQ. So many fond memories playing this with friends all night. And it's incredible to see it played so well. <laughs> um, we have, oh, hey, this is great. From Demo, we have an $800 donation. Y'all know Demo. And they say, here's the outcome of the scores I got for my run last night. $25 per star on the score screens for each song in the run. Thank you for all the support on the Step Mania Showcase and hope to be back to show off even more wild stuff soon. Best of luck to all of our runners today. And let's get to that two mil mark, folks. Peace, love, unity, respect. Thank you, Demo. Yeah, I just want to mention, if we manage to hit that uh, bonus game seven, A Link to the Past, at the same time in tandem, we should be crossing two mil. And that would just be beautiful. Make sure that you're clicking the add incentive button when you're making that donation, put it towards Link to the Past, or whatever it else it is you're passionate to see, and check out the prizes that you're entering yourself to win at the same time. From Hylian Competent, they donate $200. They say, GDQ always gets me through tough days uh, with AGDQ, UBAF, Frame Fatales, Hotfix, all of it. Thank you to every runner, commentator, host, staff member, and everyone else. You're all so good at what you do, and you just keep getting better. And thank you, Mike Uyama, for giving the world GDQ. Thank you, Highly Incompetent. <laughs> That's a hilarious name, by the way. Can we get a thank you, Mike Uyama, in the chat? All right, I'm going to take back over. I looked up where Bulb is. First off, it is in the worst spot possible. And second off, because I can now see where the entire world layout, there's apparently two pyramids in this world, which is very rare to happen in a small world. I want to say less than like 2% of them actually have two pyramids. Uh, that said, the Bulb is actually right up here. So I was going to get close to it if I just <laughs> continue going where I was going in my trajectory. Anyways, uh, this is the new... Uh, fight of the run in my opinion we do it in a very unique way thanks to uh, ooh, Mimic uh, Mimics can drop a very powerful weapon or item that it didn't drop I'll take an extra hook though uh, being distracted we fight Plantera in a new way now and this way is honestly probably the funniest way that you'll see so it will involve the lance and uh, if you blink you will miss it uh, thanks to uh, the, new, the new buffs, I mean, this is basically the new way we fight plant. Uh, it used to involve some, like, skill. You have to float around, dodge, do circle, do acrobatic moves to dodge Plantera. Uh, but now, since of the new update, the mechanic sells teleporters. So it's very easy for us to get access to teleporters, if this is not obvious about where this is going. Uh, essentially... The minecart allows us to go super fast. There's this something called, a or like, I forget what they're called. They're like actuator rails. Essentially, they, uh, they make you, uh, they activate a redstone current. I'm, I'm calling it redstone. It's Minecraft wiring is what the actual term is. 
and uh, you go between the tel two teleporters. So, as you can see here, uh, you go between them really fast. So I will get up to a lot of move speed, and then I'm going to basically Lance Plant Terra to death, and it's going to be very fast. She is a kind of stationary boss. She has three tentacles, and she will try to put herself in between you. And since you're going between these two spots at a very fast rate, she kind of just gets stuck in the middle and stops moving, allowing you to just wail on her for a while. That said, this fight, uh, I want to give a really big seizure warning. If you are not good with, like, flashiness, I really don't recommend looking. It gets very chaotic very fast. Uh, because I'm going to be basically moving directions at a very fast rate here. And this is what I mean. So if you blink, you miss it. I'm reaching Plantera with the Lance. It is doing a absurd amount of damage because of my buffs. She is in a very awkward spot. She is not fully in my range. So I'm not doing as much damage as I would like, but it should still be fine because of the amount of HP I have. And with that, Plantera is dead. I'm sorry for the viewing pleasure this was found recently and it's just a absurdly fast way of doing plantera when done right you don't have to make nearly as big of a arena and you don't have to uh basically fight there's a lot of skill removed because of this lance but it also uh adds a lot of unique building opportunities now i set up a return return pot at the start of the jungle temple this is so i didn't have to walk all the way back over here because i didn't find bulb so our next fight will be Golem. Golem will be done in a very similar way. He does take a little bit more skill. You need a little bit more HP to do it uh, than Plantera. Plantera you can technically do without any HP. Uh, Golem, on the other hand, requires quite a bit to do this strat. Uh, so this is probably the scariest fight of the run, at least for me. Uh, other people would probably tell you Mex is the scariest part of the run, but I have always had a knack for throwing my runs to Golem. Don't ask why. Golem is a complete laughing stock in the casual Terraria community, but when you're trying to fight Golem with basically nothing, uh, he's a lot harder than you would anticipate. And he got extremely buffed on the current patch. He has like 40% more HP compared to what he used to, so he's not as much of a pushover anymore. Uh, that said, Lance does make him a pushover, so we're just going to get up to full speed again, just like we did with Mechs, 66 miles an hour. Once we hit there, I'm going to summon him. I'm going to have my Lance in a direct location. Lance has a really he weird hitbox when you're going fast on a rail. You can think of it as a V. So if you see how my you see how my Lance is hitting both the arm and the the main thing, and now I'm hitting the main head and the and the hand the reason for this is because i believe it's only when you're on a rail it does like a little v formation in terms of its damage so instead of like if i were to point my lance like this instead of it just having a hitbox right here it has a hitbox like this so that's what i was doing in plant terra i was extending the hitbox by having it down slightly so i can get extra range that goes over here the hitbox on it is super wonky and i can't tell you why that said, we got super lucky and got a pick saw, so now I have an upgraded uh, weapon, or upgraded pickaxe. It's just much nicer and cleaner. And uh, we are going to make uh, our way to the second to last boss. Hopefully I can random recall to it. Yeah, I got a little closer. I wouldn't say I'm that much closer, but I got a little closer. Uh, we're going to make our way to the second last boss, which is the Lunatic Cultist. Um, He is going to be done in basically the exact same way as the previous few bosses with the lance and rails it will take a very particular setup because of how his fight works and uh he will die almost just as fast as golem if i do it right uh don't worry red if you're still watching we won't lance moon lord we can't do that <laughs> you know don't you worry we can't lance the final boss that doesn't mean we won't nurse cheese it uh sorry uh, that said, after you kill Golem, these Lunatic Cultists will spawn. They don't aggro until you actually do damage to them. I'm going to pick up a few blue bricks just in case if I can get to do a relatively new strat. Uh, 
But for the cultist, he w likes to sit just out of range of you, so we have to do some fancy minecart work. Yeah, we have to do a little bit of fancy minecart work for it to work, or yeah, to be able to hit him. But essentially, a lot of his projectiles don't go through walls, so we don't really have to worry about that. And then on top of that, I'm looking for... Oh, I can just do that. Um, on top of that, he likes to sit right above you. So with minecart set up like this, I can just switch between uh, going up and down really quickly, which allows me to uh, hit him and then move down to get him in the spot that I want and then go back up. Let me put down some torches so you guys can actually see. But once I get up to speed, he's going to appear above me. I'm going to go up. He's going to move and try to position above me again. I'm going to go down when I think he's going to move. He's going to move, go back up, do a bunch of damage. Went down a little late, so he's up there. And now I got to go back up. The Lance can't actually reach him when he's uh, fully above you, so I do have to move. Now, this clone attack is really funny with how it's programmed. Depending on which way he's facing will determine about whether or not he's above you or to the right of you. He will never be on the left clone whatsoever. This is not possible in any single difficulty of this game. No matter what, he'll either be above you or to the right of you, which is why uh, I can basically pre-fire. And the direction that he spawns in is based off of his uh, direction he's facing. Uh, with that... I don't know where the pillar is. I would love to do solar first and show off this cheese strap, but I don't know where islands are. Uh, there's a very particular cheese strap with uh, solar, and it is uh, by far the fastest pillar rotation if you can do it. But it's very risky because it requires you to have uh, islands not in your way. So because I'm going to safe it and it's GDQ, I'm not going to bother even checking. Uh, and we are going to do Vortex first, after I do one more Shimmer visit. With this last Shimmer visit, I'm going to convert the Warrior Emblem into the Ranger Emblem, and I'm also going to try to get a good Reforge on the Repeater. I don't have a Feather Fall Potion. I was so good at being Deathless, and of course I'm going to die to fall damage. Does it matter? No, but am I mad? Yes. Uh, anyways. This is why you don't get used to having a feather fall on the entire time, because as soon as you don't have that feather fall, you're going to fall to your death. Anyways, I'm going to go back down. I'm going to reforge my repeater. If you're wondering how I'm going to reforge my repeater, every time that you craft a item in this game, it has a chance of having a reforge on it. These reforges can either be really strong or, like, kind of bad. Um, so with... Hala or with Shimmer, you can decraft stuff and then just basically infinitely try to reroll a good uh a good reforge. That one's good enough, so I'm going to take it. I'm also going to make a summoner helmet because it is in theory the best helmet to kill Moon Lord with once we get uh pillar weapons. So I believe we are good there. I need to get my buffs back up because I died. Uh so yeah, we are going to go to Vortex. First. And I'm going to do this in a very particular way. So you're going to notice that I'm going to be flying in the air for a lot of pillars. This is because, as I mentioned before, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, monsters in this game require solid ground to spawn, and this includes pillar enemies. So as long as I'm in the air and there's no floating islands next to me or near me, I can basically get away without any enemies spawning and then get where I want to get. Uh, I'm going to recall it here because I don't have blocks on the right keys. And just redo that. I'm going to actually log so all the enemies despawn. That is not what the world I wanted to join. That is my backup world just in case if I died or something dumb. I'm going to retry that. I'm playing this ultra safe. Uh, <laughs> pillars can either go really bad or really good. Right now, this is a little slow, but again, I'm playing it safe. Uh, we have a cheese strap for every single pillar in this game, uh, which I will be hopefully showing off here. Uh, the Vortex is really well known. You just got to make a little bunker. No enemies in Vortex pillars actually goes through walls. 
So that means uh, it's very easy to make a uh, basically a safety box in which I can just shoot straight up. I can basically shoot straight up, kill all the monsters, and be in absolute no risk of dying. Now, this is a little bit awkward because it spawned right where the temple is, but if I shoot straight up, these unholy arrows have piercing. They're going to go up, follow the parabola curve, come back down, and they're just, just going to hit the guys at the bottom. This is kind of a little lucky that this worked out. But uh, yeah, this is a very easy boss fight. These pillars are probably the biggest slog of the game. I think it's most people's least favorite part. You have to kill 100 of uh, each of the pillar's enemies before the shield goes down, and then you have to kill the shield itself. The pillars correspond with the four main weapon uh, classes of the game. You have Vortex, which is Ranger, Stardust, which is uh, Summoner, uh, Solar is Melee, and Nebula is Mage. Uh, in terms of hardest to easiest, casually, I would definitely say Solar is the hardest, but it's honestly the most fun to cheese because it's satisfying. And yeah, again, it's just a slog because I gotta kill 100 of each type of enemy, so I have to kill 400 enemies here, and then I have to kill the pillars. They do get faster as it goes, but this will probably be a good time for donations because I'm just killing enemies and holding down left click sitting in a box. <laughs> okay, thanks, Habu. Uh, from Chenzi Coden, thank you for your $100 donation. They say, donations galore! I'll write limericks for you. Oops, it's a haiku. <laughs> Gen Z. Um, from MBH, thank you for your $25 donation. They say, there once was a speedrun event with prizes presented by Scent. They got quite inventive with bonus game incentives and that's where this donation went. Thank you, MBH. Um, from Fitz, we have a $50 donation. They say, greetings from France. That week went by so fast. Thank you to all GDQ staff and all wonderful runners for an awesome event. As a healthcare worker, cancer prevention is very important topic for me, so I couldn't not donate for PCF. This donation also goes towards the A Link to the Past run, because more GDQ is always a good thing. Um, right. From Swordna, we have a $100 donation. They very simply say, Terraria, woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Once you uh, kill each pillar, you're going to get a bunch of fragments, which then in terms allow you to craft more better weapons. So this repeater is now outdated. I won't need the lance anymore. We're kind of just chilling with these. I don't know why I'm floating up to the pillar for solar. Solar, or I'm sorry, for Vortex. Vortex has a very known cheese where you just get these stardust cells to spawn and then bring them out of its range and uh, kind of just kite them. The issue is, is on current patch, they did actually significantly buff these guys. So if you are having a struggle with kiting them, there's actually another funny cheese that you can do where if you just dig a hole straight down and now just shoot up, these cells don't really get to you and they do a little wiggle dance. So uh, for this, I am outside, so I don't know when the pillar goes down, or I don't have the number visible for me. So uh, the only way I can tell if I kill 100 enemies is it's going to tell me in the bottom left corner that I've killed 100 enemies, and then you're going to see the red lines from the monsters that spawn. They're going to stop appearing, and that's when you know the shield is down. Other than that, I'm killing 100 of these guys, so you can go right back to donation reading. It's going to be a, a common occurrence for the next three pillars. <laughs> or two. Sorry, uh, did you say I could go on donations? Yeah, you can go. You? Sorry, you're gonna have a lot of you're gonna have a lot of uh, time because I'm killing 100 enemies for Thank each. Thank you. Pillar, no worries. So. I was just reviewing some stuff, making a priority list. Um, you know, Prometheus donates five dollars, and they bring up a great point. They say, "Cute chat. As much as we love to gather money for PCF, always think about yourself. Please only donate if you can afford it. No hard feelings if you can't donate much or none at all. Others got you covered since we are in this together. Also, every kind of help counts." be it through donations, volunteering, or simply watching. We can all make the world a better place, warm people's hearts, and yeet count cancer out of existence. Absolutely correct. Uh, thank you so much for that sentiment, Prometheus. Very true. Only donate if you can. Um, and, you know, also here we have a $50 donation from Strikes, who says, My deepest thanks to the staff, 
the runners, and the PCF for your sustained efforts in bringing so much goodness to the world. May this donation be my first of many. That is so cool. Thank you, Strikes. I love reading first-time donors. If you've been listening or watching for a while and looking for a cue, looking for a, a sign to make your first donation, maybe now's the time. Thank you to FFX Faith for your $50 donation. They say, an incentive for a 100% run of The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and a way to make AGDQ last longer, and more importantly, an amazing way to support the organization, uh, the Prevent Cancer Foundation? Yes, please! All right. And, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. So uh, next up is everybody's favorite pillar, the solar pillar. This is probably considered by many to be the hardest pillar casually, and I would tend to agree. The reason this pillar is actually so hard is mainly because of the fact that there is a monster that can spawn that is supposed to pre basically prevent you from flying. If you are not next to a block, this enemy will spawn and like attempt to prevent you from flying, which is this guy. Uh, that said, this island is in a little awkward spot, so I'm trying to get past it. And now no enemies are bothering me because there is no blocks for them to spawn on. And I'm going to make a, another little arena. This is going to be off of the same practical use that I was doing before with the uh, mob spawners. I'm going to make a little basket for all the monsters to spawn in. And I'm going to make a little safety area up at the top here. Uh, I'm actually close enough to the top of the world so you actually will get to see them spawn. It's not, it's not like whether or not they're on screen or not. It's actually like a set distance away from you in the player model. So if you go to the edges of the world, you can actually see these guys spawn. I don't think I'm high enough. Now I'm high enough. So you can see dragon do work here. I don't really need to fire anything because I have the... Uh, mainly because I have the hollowed hood, which is the uh, armor set specifically for summoner the stardust dragon just happens to be a very powerful uh weapon in the end game and it just shreds through these enemies just casually you can see how they're spawning and just instantly dying and i really don't have to do much work other than maybe an occasional fire uh so yeah the, this dragon is beyond broken but you can just see how p easy this pillar is you can do this on all difficulties generally on a higher difficulty you will need to shoot the bow up and then have it fall back down on the pillar thing but since i made this a little high my arrows aren't going to come down so i'm not going to bother uh, messing with that but once i'm done i can just kind of stand here i'm going to get no enemies to spawn i gotta figure out where the pillar is uh, and then i can just fire down at this pillar from safety up here if i can find it it's more directly down right there but otherwise that is the very easy way to kill uh solar and we're going to get some very even more powerful weapons from this uh all right so last up on our list is nebula and nebula is a very interesting pillar in the way that we cheese it so there is this is going to take me a little bit to explain so you're going to have to bear with me uh there is a mod or there is a mob that spawns at this pillar i believe its name is the nebula floater it is a little brain looking thing that uh will fire a projectile at you when it has vision of you and if it doesn't have vision of you it's just gonna straight up charge at you the weird thing about these guys is there are two types of line of sight in this game. There is type 1 line of sight, which is direct X and Y coordinates to each player. So it's like wherever your hitbox is to like wherever their hitbox is. It's a direct line. And then line of sight 2 is not so direct. It's slightly off. It, I believe the term is a vector. Uh, I had somebody explain this to me recently, and I still don't fully get it. But essentially, these guys have two different li lines of sight. You have the one, uh, you have the one that uses the vector and one that uh, doesn't. The thing is, is their pathing line of sight uses the vector, and the uh, and their shooting line of sight doesn't. So if you build a very particular setup, 
of blocks like this. This will make, make it so that they have line of sight on the vector so they don't charge at you, but they won't have line of sight for the laser so they don't fire at you. So it makes them look really weird because they will just float in the air for basically what it looks to be uh, no reason. They'll just sit there staring at you and they won't do anything. And that's because we essentially just broke their AI. They think they have vision of you, but they don't have vision to fire at you. So they, yeah, they just don't work. So you're going to see as soon as I go up here, after I make the spawn box, uh, enemies are going to spawn down there. And then look at this guy. He just looked like an idiot. Look at this bozo. Nebula floater. The only way how they can get to me is if they uh, are spawned like directly below me because then they won't have line of sight through the two blocks below me. But I'm firing straight down, so I basically instant kill them. So I never have to worry about it. This is one of probably the most creative uh, ways to cheese the pillars and probably my favorite. But uh, yeah, these, these mobs are really funny to just look at if you've never seen this before. Shout out to Mike for, or I believe it was actually Dakdam that figured it out, but Mike is the one who explained it to me. He's kind of our uh, engineering guy in the Terraria server. If, I, or if we find something and we can't explain it, he can generally explain it to us. Dragon, why'd you knock that guy at me? That was rude. Uh, so yeah, it's very interesting. But after I kill this final pillar, we are finally going to summon Moon Lord. I'm just going to go down and DPS it down here. It's easier. Uh, yeah, but after I kill this pillar, Moon Lord will spawn in 60 seconds. I will be building a little bit of a weird... Don't kill me. I'll be building a little bit of a weird setup uh, to kill Moon Lord here. Uh, I am going to be cheesing it through Nurse, but if you haven't seen this before, on prior patches, the main laser of Moon Lord isn't actually supposed to go through or is supposed to go through blocks if you don't have line of sight of him or if he does not have line of sight of you you can kind of do the same thing that i just explained with the nebula floaters so he's gonna have a main eye laser up here and he has direct line of sight of me the issue is is the main death ray beam that does a bunch of damage to you uh is basically more than three blocks wide so if you build it like this that laser is not going to hit me and it won't, like, go through blocks. So it's a very, like... I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just very weird. Uh, this will probably be fixed now that I'm showing it off. And it sounds like a major abuse, but it's too cool not to show off. The reason these uh, other platforms are here, by the way, is solely because I want to stop the random projectiles that Moon Lord flings out. Uh, but yeah, Moon Lord is honestly a pushover fight in classic mode. He's very easy to just heal cheese. He takes about 40 gold total. You can see the death ray just missing me. The angle of uh, approach is just too much for uh, the ray to hit me. It's really funny. You can technically do this on all modes, but uh, Nurse is probably going to die in phase two if you try to tank it on master, or on expert or above. So this is a uh, classic only strat that you can do realistically. I think there is a setup for Expert, but it's very particular, and Nurse still likes to die. Uh, that said, Stardust Dragon, gonna make quick work of Moon Lord. I just have to make sure I don't let Nurse die by leaving the inventory, or leaving her menu open, and I just gotta keep throwing down. You can just see Dragon doing a lot of damage. Uh, with that, that is uh, Terraria Moon Lord. Thankfully, I got blessed with a pretty good seed that I got to show off a bunch of things. Uh, nice little drops, Terrarian. Thank you, Red. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna do a quick few shoutouts. Thank you to the, thank you to the devs for creating this wonderful game. You're gonna see the credits roll. Uh, Blast. I've played this game since release. This game, I think, released on my birthday in, I believe it was 2011. So I'm very happy to get to show this game off for GDQ or at GDQ, just the entire speedrunning scene. I want to thank the uh, Terraria speedrunning Discord. I know they're doing a watch party right now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Thank you for helping me uh, do all this. And then just honestly, a big thanks to my stream community. I love you guys. Thank you for the memes and the donos. Uh, thank you for the support over the past few days. And this just 
final shout out to the GDQ staff. Thank you for putting it on. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for basically everything. Anyways, that is Terraria Moonlord. Any percent or Terraria Moonlord? No major abu or no major abuses in whatever I got. I'm sorry, I ranted. Okay, wow, what a fantastic run from Habu that was. Give it up in the chat for Habu, please, and thank you. So gorgeous. I want to read one quick donation here. Uh, they say, the Moon Lord is soon to be toast. AGDQ always has me engrossed. I've had so much fun this week. More speed runs are what I seek. Much love to the runner and host. <laughs> Dono goes to a link to the past. Thank you, and that's from Mocha Cola for $25. Um, and they mentioned that a link to the past donation, currently we're sitting at $163,000 towards that 400K to get bonus game seven tonight. A link to the past, 100%. Um, so please get those donations in. Make sure that you're clicking that add incentive button. But for now, we are actually going to take you to a word from a very special place, Annapurna.
Welcome back, gamers. Don't forget, you're watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online, powered by Twitch. We've been having a fantastic day so far. We got to keep that excitement up. We got to learn some more. So we're about to hand it over to Jay Hobbs talking with Nick about Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Take it away. Thank you so much, Mello. That's right. I am Jay Hobbs and I'm here with Nick underscore style, the man. He's bringing in the style with, with him right now, wearing the jersey and everything. I like it. Nick, how are you doing? Hey, thank you so much, man. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm super hyped about being at uh, AGDQ. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it, guys. I guess we can <laughs> start with the interview. <laughs> yeah. How are, how, are the, how are the nerves hitting you right now? Oh, dude. Like, uh, until like an hour ago, I was chill i was practicing some boss fights like practicing the skips tricks but now that i'm like i'm here with you guys i'm like getting high getting a bit nervous <laughs> but it's it's part of the thing right <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's all part of it. And all those nerves will ease away, I'm sure. I'm going to fire right into a social media question here because we got one from at SinSpitterX who says, what part of the old Souls category makes this truly the Dark Souls of AGDQ 2023 runs? Uh, yeah. So, uh, old Souls category basically runs from like basically all, all maps of the, the base game. Uh I'm sure that if you are familiar with the game, Iron Kip is a name like it's a it's a good name. You it might remind you of something and Shrine of Mana as well. Mm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, those two are uh, definitely the the toughest part. Very, very tough ones. So uh, bringing up Shrine of Mana makes me immediately think about the fact that you're running Dark Souls Two: Scholar of the First Sin here, and not Dark Souls Two: The Base. And there is actually a distinction between those two, as opposed to kind of Dark Souls One, where the differences are a bit more minor. Uh, so why Scholar of the First Sin? Like, what what is different about it? Why are we seeing this one from you today? So there is uh, some difference between the the first release, what we call Vanilla, and Scholar of the First Sin. Uh, as you mentioned, some uh, enemies are in different position, and Shrine of Amana, uh, uh, that we were talking about, uh, have a, a, a lot more of mages and uh, arch drakes. That uh, there is the the melee soldier, and yeah, uh, the the difference between the, the those two games in that area is huge. In um, in vanilla, you basically like run near, uh, close to the wall, you hug some like enemies and pillars and you are at the fogo but in scholar in the old days like the so arrows were so intense uh that uh <laughs> i uh, me and other runners we developed a strat that it's pretty consistent but still anything can go wrong like mm -hmm. there is some attacks that uh even if you press like even if you dodge at the right timing it's not dodgeable like you don't have enough iframes to, to dodge it uh, so it's super concerning <laughs> I totally get that. And we actually had a question from at Shadow Diosama who uh, was asking along those lines, what was the funniest death or mistake you ever had in a run? Yeah, I have two to point out. First one okay. was in Iron Kip. So in Iron Kip, uh, for you that you're not familiar with, Iron Kip is basically like uh, a lava scenario. Like if you fell, you fall in lava and you insta die. So I did a jump from like two platforms and mid air I got shot by a, a lone knight. <laughs> and I like when you are shot mid air, you lose all your momentum. And my character yep. like just fell in lava. And I was like, I was so shocked that I, I couldn't <laughs> believe what just happened. And the uh. other mistake, uh, uh, was one that I talked to you pre uh, previously. Uh, I was in world record pace during a grind session, and the muscle memory from another category kicked in, so I did a wrong warp. And when you uh, warp to uh, uh, the wrong section, you lose like eight seconds. So I warped wrong once, I realized that, and I was like, okay, eight seconds. And I did it again, yeah. like back to back, <laughs> warping to the, wrong, uh, to the wrong bonfire. I was like, dude, I just lost like... 16 uh, seconds for nothing. <laughs> it happens. It happens. So uh, Dark Souls 2, kind of the dark horse of the, the trilogy for a lot of people, but why why Dark Souls 2? Because it's definitely the one you've put the most time into out of these games. Uh, what what draws you to it? Why do you believe, like I do, that it's maybe one of the best of the, of the series? <laughs> yeah, so, I started speedrunning during the, the pandemic, 
And uh, first I had like Dark Souls 1, PTDE, and I had Remastered because it was in sale for like a couple bucks. And I had both games, but I never played it. So a friend of mine, Philip, uh, said, yo, dude, it's, it, it's locked down. Why don't you play Dark Souls? And I was like, okay, let me see what I what I do with this game. And I uh, got all achievements for PTD and Remastered. And like days later, Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 went on sale as well. And I bought those two games. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I actually managed to like play them all, like getting all achievements for both games. But then I was like, okay, what do I do now? And I heard that Dark Souls 2 have this uh, challenge that if you finish the game without using any bonfire, you get a, a ring that make your weapon invisible. And the other one that if you finish the game without dying, you get for the other hand. So basically I did a challenge run of no death, no bonfire run. And uh, because like, because Dark Souls 2 was the only one who offered me like a post game challenge, I guess I got yeah. like, attached to the game. And then when I got oh. the rings, I was like, yeah, what now? And <laughs> <laughs> Speedrun it is. <laughs> Speedrun, yeah. No, that makes total sense. I love that that the game it, its own challenges are actually what ended up drawing you towards that. Uh super super cool. Uh now I did want to ask you you're repping the jersey and everything and I happen to notice that there's actually a fair number of Brazilian runners at the top of the Dark Souls 2 leaderboards. How does it feel to be here at AGDQ 2023 uh repping Brazil on the big stage? Yeah, it's it's actually a pleasure because uh, AGDQ is like the 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 last event on my wish list to participate, and um, yeah, uh, about the Brazilians, it's it it's also really fun because when I started speed running, there was like not a single Brazilian, and a runner called Kawai was the first one to reach me and saying, "Yo, dude, uh, I do enjoy Dark Souls 2 as well. What do I do to start speed running?" And we started chatting a little bit, and uh, like weeks later, Kawhi was also speed running, and then uh, Hyder JJ uh, kicked in as well, and then Juan Zito, and a lot of my viewers also started speed running, and like it's it's super fun because I, I see myself as like uh, I was I don't want to sound like not humble, but I was the first one, and I brought people right. to the game that I love. So I'm sharing the love that I have of the game with other people, and that makes me super happy. <laughs> oh, it's it's always good when you can bring a community together uh, yeah. around that. Like that's super super fun. Uh, Nick, I, I wish we had more time. I want to ask you one uh, very quickly: what is kind of the difference between an any percent run and the old souls that we're going to be seeing from you? Because you you said we're going to be seeing all the maps, but what exactly is that is that difference there? So when Dark Souls Two speed run, uh, when Dark Souls Two released, speed run was like right next to it and previous uh, dark souls 2 also follows the dark souls formula that is you need to kill four bosses to progress the story and the, when dark souls 2 speed running started people thought that killing the four bosses was the quickest route but they soon realized uh, about the one million for uh, souls thing that you can traverse turn of winter with one million and that was faster but um uh, some part of the community was like, okay, but I do enjoy killing the four bosses. I do enjoy going through all the game. And they split at the character. Uh, they created any percent and any percent old souls. Like then any percent you get a one million souls and old souls you kill the, the four bosses. Mm -hmm. So now we're actually getting to see a little bit more, you know, actually a lot more of the game from you. Yeah. Uh, well, Really appreciate it. I'm so looking for this. Is like one of the runs I've been most hyped for the whole week. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching. I'm gonna let you get back to practicing and wish you some good luck. But thank you so much for joining me, Nick. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, folks. Let's get back to those speed runs. AGQ 2023 online is not quite over. We got a little bit more for you. See you soon. See ya. $100 donation. They say, I love how inclusive a community GDQ is every year. So many folks who love to shout it out whenever they can. So I'm joining in with $100 towards having a whiteboard that says trans rights. Best of luck to buffet time on the run. And from Felix A, we have a $30 donation. They say, amazing GDQ marathon. Can't wait for Half-Life Alex. Thanks so much for that, Felix A.
oh, I, I am getting the sign. So it, it must be time. This run's about to be divine. Here is the sublime buffet time. 